Another classic problem that's used to demonstrate branching recursion is the Towers of Hanoi. So just in case you aren't familiar with this, I wrote a little program that allows us to see what this looks like and to kind of play the game. Um, it's not really much of a game, it's more of a, a puzzle. Oops, I have to tell it how many disks I want. Let's go with four disks. Four is a somewhat reasonable number. So the way that this works is you can move disks around. There are basically three pegs that you can drop them on, but you're only allowed to drop things onto larger disks. And the goal is to move the entire stack from one area to another. Okay, so how do we do this? And, and what does this have to do with recursion? Well, if I gave you the problem, let's actually let's go back and let's start with one disk. Well, there's a really simple one. I move it from there to there. Woo I'm done. Okay. So you could, this is a base case. What about two? Well, in order to move two, I need to move that one off, that one over, and this one back. What about three? Instead of actually doing three, it's kind of interesting to talk about it. So in order to move three from here to the right side, what I really want to do is I want to move two into the middle and then move this one over and then move two across. And so in a general sense, if I know how to move n disks, then I know how to move n plus one disks. And I know how to move one disk, so that means that I know how to do two, which means I know how to do three, four, five, etc. And we're treating this recursively because we're saying that in order to move a certain number of disks, I'm going to solve that problem by solving the problem of moving one fewer disks. And so in this case, I can move two to there, then I move the one across, and then I move two to there, and we get our uh, solution. Let's look at this as code, though. So I'm going to make a set of data, we'll call it pegs, and pegs is going to be an array. And to start off with, all of the values that, or all of our disks are going to be on the first peg. Uh, I'm going to make this an array of lists, and I want it to go from 1, 1, 2, whatever argument is typed in, converted to an int, and then a list there. And then there will be nothing on the second and third peg. Okay, so, uh, yeah. The head of the list will be the top disk on that peg. So in this case, if I typed in five, I'd have one, two, three, four, five on, uh, on my peg. And we can write code that'll print this out fairly nicely. We can so say something like this for uh, p in pegs. Print line p. I'm actually going to just say we'll have it with the list. Scala of Hanoi. Oh, and once again, I forgot to give it an argument. So let's say five. So I have five disks. So the first peg has one through five, and then the other two have, have nothing on them. Okay. I want to write a function that moves one disk. So move one disk. I'm going to move it from one peg, which will be an integer, to another peg, which will be another integer. And this will actually mutate the array, so I'm not going to give anything back. And the first thing I want to do is I'm only going to do this. I'm going to require that something be true. And that is either that pegs sub 2 is empty or pegs sub from 
dot head is smaller than peg sub two dot head. I.e. the basically what I'm saying there is that the th the disk that I'm moving, the top of the from stack, has to be smaller than the top of the, the to stack. Okay, so if these are not true, then this was an illegal move and we're not allowed to do it. So basically this check in here is to make sure we never do any illegal moves. If we try to, our program will crash and we'll get a, a, a statement telling us that we try to do something wrong. Well, so what do we need to do here? We need to say that pegs sub two, we're gonna add onto it peg sub from dot head. And then we need to take off the top one from pegs dot from. So we set, oh, I'm missing a parentheses in there. So we set it equal to its tail. Just to show that this works, move one disk. We're gonna move from peg zero to peg one, and then we have our print statement. And so what should happen here is that the one should move over and be there. And the two, three, four, five are left on the first peg, and the one has been moved over. Okay, so this is a this is a nice function that we can utilize to kind of play our game. So where does the recursion come in? The recursion comes in in the function that's going to move lots of disks. So move disks. Once again, we're gonna have a peg that we're moving from. We're gonna have a peg that we're moving to. And we're gonna have how many disks? I'll just call it n. Again, this is gonna mutate our array, so it doesn't return anything to us. And as we described, the way that we move n disks is based upon moving n minus one disks, unless we're down to one. So if n is one, then I'm just going to say move one disk from two. Okay, so if I'm only supposed to move one disk, I use the function that we've already written. Else, what if I'm supposed to move more than one disk? Well then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a recursive call, move disks, and I want to move n minus one disks from my current stack onto not the two, but the other stack. We'll come back and we'll figure out how we're gonna calculate other. Okay, so after I have moved n minus one disks from there to the other, I can do move one disk from my from stack to the two stack, and then move disks the n minus one that I've moved on to other, I can move them from other to two. And there we go. Now, assuming that we could figure out how to calculate the other stack, then we'd be done. It turns out this is pretty easy to do because the pegs are numbered zero, one, and two. Okay, so an observation that we can make is if we add together all pegs, zero plus one plus two is always going to be equal to three. So a way to calculate the peg that we aren't using is three minus from minus two. Whatever's left over from that is the other peg. Okay, does this work? We know that our move one disk only allows legal moves. So I am going to say move disks from zero to two. So what this should do, if it works, uh, oops, and how many uh, do I want to move? I wanna move however many there are. Actually, probably the better way to say that is pegs, 
sub zero dot length. So I want to move all of the disks from zero to two. So this is going to print out initially and it should have our one through five here. When it prints out again, we should have nothing on the first two. And let's put an extra print line in here just so that you can, we'll see a blank line. And there we go. Okay, so we started off with all of the disks on the uh, first peg and we finish off with all of them on the last peg. So here's a recursive algorithm that solves the Towers of Hanoi and it's based upon the fact that we are, we're doing a branching here. We are moving n minus one disks and then we're moving n minus one disks again. So we go off and we do this recursive call but we remember where we are so that after we've done it, we can continue to do things and in fact do the same type of function again. So that's a non-graphical solution to this. Uh, the book includes a graphical solution so that you can actually watch this being played out. Uh, it's also interesting to, to talk about the, the order of this. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll talk about the order of our recursive algorithms in, in a later video.